Two metres apart is wide enough for us. Two streets apart. Two cities. We aren't friends, are we? We walk past each other and you cross the road. Good, I think. Thank God we can hide behind this. I know your coat. How fake the leather sounds. I know your fringe like it was my own. I know you get the 10 past 8 bus on Tuesdays because I make sure I get the later one. I know you smoke. You drink red wine because I can see it sometimes on your teeth. I'm not a creep, but somehow I study you. You hesitate in the street slightly, and I think perhaps you were going to say something after all. You stop. I stop. You blow at your fringe. But it wasn't me that had your attention, but the old man behind me. You wave at him in his garden and walk on. Sometimes I spit after I see you. Sometimes I have to go inside and wash my mouth. Sometimes look in the mirror. I never cry. The kids tell me you go to your allotment every day. You're good with plants. You put things in a pot and they grow and then you put them on the table. You eat the peas, I ask them. Raw? They taste okay when they come from the ground, my eldest tells me. Hooray, I say. I look at my shop-bought vegetables in a pan of salty water. Hooray, I think. I walk past the allotment later, I'm going that way anyway, and I wonder which one is yours, the one that has beans and courgettes already up, or perhaps the one with a set of chairs and a rainbow flag. Yeah, that would be right. And maybe the messiest one of all. That somehow just says, this is a place you can be. I imagine you and all the kids, dirty hands and faces and looking at things as you pull them up. I can imagine you kneeling down, showing the youngest a little worm you just found in the earth. I come home and I buy cut flowers from Tesco's even though I have to queue, which I put in a jug. After the clapping, I walk round the block. I'm on my own and I want to walk. I go your way. I don't know why. I could say I have to drop something off for the kids, but I don't. I go your way because that's the way my feet take me. My feet take me places and I go. That is the only rule I have these days. You're outside in the street. Smoking. And I know you've given up smoking, but this being too long in the house is killing us all. I know I am drinking. I am ready to cross the road and walk the other way, but there is something new in the way you are standing. You're holding onto a railing like it's the only thing keeping you up. And I look at you for a second. And you wipe your eyes on your sleeve and you sniff and then you turn away. But I remember that look. I remember that way of holding on. And the way it felt like the whole world would slide if I let go. Chrissy, I say. But you've gone. I don't see you the next time I drop the kids off. You're usually in the background or making the tea, moving around, being, and I don't see you at the bus stop. I is Chrissy ill? I ask the kids. No, they say. She hurt her hand. How does she hurt her hand? She dropped something on it. And I remember the way I told my mother I'd shut my foot in the car door by accident. And the way I told my boss that I'd been sick. I find you at the allotment. Chrissy, I say as I stand by the gate. You don't hear me. 
You're out of earshot and busy putting canes in the ground. I remember once being shut in a room all night while he raised outside the door. Chrissy? Sleeping in a hotel bathroom because I was scared to come out. Chrissy? Then you see me. You come over. Why are you always watching me? You ask. It takes me aback. Because you're beautiful, I say. Because if I were him, I would have chosen you too. You scoff. You're cleverer. I got away. If that is clever, then you laugh at that. I laugh like it is the morning sun. Then you stop suddenly. The laugh is hurting you. You put a hand on your side, and I know it wasn't that funny. No joke is that funny. And when you lift your head and look at me, there's something else. For who else in all the world would know like we know? He has a temper. Of course he does. He doesn't mean it, and after he is sorry, you don't have to tell me, Chrissy. I know the sto story. I know the sorry. It's just the lockdown. He's stressed as all hell. He might lose his job. And I nod. You blow at your fringe. You hesitate, but there's no more to be said. You go back to your beans then. I go back to my house. I walk the long way home. Next time I see you in the street, you don't cross the road. You don't wave to the man behind me. You hesitate, then you stop. You stand and turn. And when I catch up, we walk. Two metres between us. In silence for a while.